Hello students! Let's say I want the numbers that divide 99. I want that collection. Well, should I use a set or a list? Let's use a list. We'll make sure we keep them in size order. And uh, let's say I want the i for i in range. I want all the numbers that divide 99. So how big do I have to check? Uh, for instance, does anything bigger than 99 divide 99? No. So I have to go all the way up to 99. But 99 does divide 99, because 99 times 1 is 99. So I have to go up to there. And what do I want? Well, I want the numbers that, if I take 99 and I divide by i, I get no remainder. So let's try that, and I'll see I get the numbers here that all do divide 99. OK. And I could do this for any value of n. So let's say now I want the numbers uh, under 100, numbers under 100 with four divisors, with exactly four divisors. So you see this has six divisors, 99 had six. I want the numbers with four divisors. So how could I get that? Well, let's, let's say I say, okay, numbers under 100, and uh, I'll assume that we're in the positive integers. So we'll go from 1 to 99, just like that. Uh, but now here, what I want is I want the number of divisors to be 4. So I have to find the divisors of uh, my number. Um, OK, well, how could I do that? Well, what I could do is I could, and let me use j, 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 and i. So now instead of using 99, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the divisors of i, whatever i is. Uh, OK, and what do I need? I need the length of this to be equal to 4. And as you can see, uh, I get this list of numbers. It says each of these numbers has four divisors. So let's check. Uh, does 6 have the four, four divisors? Well, let's see. It's got 1, 2, 3, and 6. So yeah, 8, 1, 2, 4, and 8. Sure. 10, 1, 2, 5, and 10. Sure. So this seems to work. OK, that's nice. Let's say I want the numbers, the numbers that have exactly two divisors. And once again, we're only talking about positive integers here. Well, that's easy to change. I just put a 2 there. And I get a list of very famous numbers. I'm pretty sure many of you have seen this list before. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. This is the list of prime numbers. OK, now if I want to know if uh, a number is prime, I could just check to see if it's in this list. For instance, let's say I don't know, uh, is 57 is 57 a prime number? Well, I could just ask, hey, is 57 in my list? And it will tell me, no, 57 is not a prime number. Uh, OK, so is there another way to tell if something's a prime? Because this is going to run out at 100. I guess I could keep making this bigger. Um, but is there a better way to tell whether something's a prime number in Python? And the answer is yes. There's actually a special library where we can grab an isPrime function. Okay, well, what do I mean library? Well, just like you can go to a library and take out a book in Python, we have libraries where you go to visit a library and you take out some functions. And there is a library called Simpy. I guess you would more properly pronounce it SimPy because there's a thing in Python about putting the word pi at the end of something. So whatever it is, you know, this is for symbolic uh, computation in Python. So they took sim and pi. But we're going to grab is prime from the SimPy. I think SimPy sounds cuter. And I don't think anybody minds. From the SimPy or SimPy library. OK, so how do I grab is prime from the SimPy library? Well, if you have the Anaconda distribution, or if you've uh, grabbed SimPy in some other way, using pip or some other method, uh, then you should already have access to the library. But this function is not built into base Python. So what I need to do is I need to say, OK, go to the library. So from SimPy, import the function is prime. And now I should have an is prime function. So I could ask, hey, is 101 prime? Yes, it is. Is 
99 prime? Well, we know it has six divisors, so 99 is not. Okay, so let's maybe uh, use the is prime function. So if we wanted the prime numbers from 1 to 100, instead of using uh, this method that we did over here, right, which was kind of long and a little bit confusing because it, it's a nested comprehension. It's a comprehension inside a comprehension. So instead of doing all that, what I could just do is I could say, okay, i for i in the range. Uh, let's see, I said I wanted numbers under 100. And I'll just say if is prime i. But of course, uh, let's start at 1, um, which is not prime. Uh, wouldn't have unique factorization if it was. And we get the list of primes. So this is the same list that we got before, 2, 3, 5, 7, and so on. Okay, suppose I wanted the list of even primes under 100. Well, I could also say I want it to be prime and I want i when I divide by 2 to give me 0 as the remainder. And as you see, there's only one even prime. I guess that's no big surprise, right? Once we get past 2, uh, we're not going to see any more evens. Okay. Um, Suppose now I wanted the primes of the form 4k plus 1. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, for example, I could say that 5 is of the form 4k plus 1 because I could write it as 4 times something plus 1. And similarly, uh, 7 is not. 7, if I write it as 4 k plus something in terms of like quotient and remainder like we would do with the division algorithm, I get a 3. So this is of the form 4k plus 1 and this is of the form 4k plus 3. And uh, what about say uh, 13? 13, I know I skipped 11 because it's not going to be of the form 4k plus 1, uh, I can get 12 plus 1 and this is of the form 4k plus 1 as well. So I want the primes of the form 4k plus 1 under 100. So how could I do that? Well, I know that if I divide by 4, I want a remainder of 1. Okay, so we could work with that. So let's just take what I have here, and I, want, I know when I divide by 4, I want the remainder to be 1. And this is going to give me all the primes under 100 of the form 4k plus 1. So you'll see I'm getting the 5. Like I said, I didn't get the 7 or the 11. Like we said, we wouldn't get uh, the 13. We got that as well. And you can see these others. Uh, the 4 times 4 plus 1 gives me 17 and so on. This is 4 times 10 plus 1 and so on. So we're getting these primes of the form uh, uh, 4k plus 1. Let's say I want to know the amount of primes. How many are there? Well, one thing I could do is I could do that. That works just fine. Another thing I could do is I could do something similar. I could say, okay, I don't want to do that. I want just count one each time you find one. So we'll remove this list entirely and we will use a generator comprehension. And you'll see this works as well because what it's doing is it's going through the numbers up to 100, checking that they're prime, checking that they're of the form 4k plus 1, and each time it finds one that succeeds, it adds 1. So we start at 0 and it adds a 1 each time and eventually we get to 11. Okay, let's say now instead I wanted to do this for uh, not 100, not 1,000, not 10,000, not 100. Let's do it for a million. Okay, and uh, it doesn't take that long. You know, uh, is prime is, is a pretty effect, efficient function and uh, Python is not a slow language. So uh, this worked as well. Uh, it worked nicely. That's the correct answer. Uh, you could check it by hand. It would take a long time. Uh, but what I want to do now is I want to do something just a little different. I want to reverse the order here. Okay, so you saw how long that took. Now let's, let's, let's do each of these again. And you'll see an asterisk forms here when, uh, when we start it. And we'll see how long it takes. Okay, now let's see how long this takes. Huh, this one is noticeably faster. So why is that the case? Okay, 
Well, Python knows, Python's very clever when it puts together your code, it knows that if uh, it have, has an if statement with an and. So you, you're checking two things. Now, if the first part doesn't work, it's not gonna bother checking the second thing because we have an and statement here, okay? So in this one here, in this line of code here, it's checking to see if it's prime first. And if it turns out to be prime, then it does an additional check. In this one here, it's checking to see whether it's congruent to one mod four first, or if it's of the form 4K plus one first. Now checking to see if it's of the form 4K plus one, that's really quick. A single division, a single modulus, this is a really fast operation. So it doesn't always have to run the is prime, where even though is prime is pretty fast for what it does, it does take more time to check whether or not something's prime. So it's better to put this one first and this one second, because this one it can breeze through and this one it, it takes a little longer. Uh, and that does matter. Uh, as we write more complicated programs that deal with larger things, especially answering questions in mathematics, where things can get big very, very quickly, it's important for us to write fast and efficient code. And we will, uh, we will explore some ways of um, more accurately measuring time as we move on, uh, rather than just hitting enter and seeing which one feels to be faster. Uh, but we'll get to that later. And uh, we've introduced ourselves to the isPrime function.